Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching the Electric Performance Channel with Blake Fuller, who's gonna be attacking Pikes Peak on August 30th. And we've got some community questions for you, Blake. All right, do you ever stop and think about the history you are making and how you could look back in 20 or 30 years and see this as a turning point in motorsports? That, that is a great question. Um, I do actually, uh, it's what motivates me. It's something that being uh, somebody who loved cars and loved the history of cars and somebody who, like I, I've, I've researched a lot of the great drivers that have made what I consider to be not only significant driving achievements, but have uh, progressed motorsports or automotive knowledge. Uh, we look at those now and it's like, you know, it's that hindsight's 2020, like, oh, well, that's obvious that you would do such and such to progress automotive, right? Um, when I looked at just running the Model S in 2016, that's what motivated me to do it, was that nobody had done it yet. It was like, man, I've been wanting to do this since 2012. It's a great car. Why isn't somebody building a race car out of it? Why aren't they showing how things have progressed? Because the average person still thinks that electric cars are not that exciting or that they aren't capable. So. That was what motivated me with the Model S. And yeah, our, our un, unilateral focus was to try to make history because in doing so, we raise awareness for the entire, the entire community, which is exactly what I'm really excited about with the Model 3 at Pikes this year, as well as, um, unfortunately, Mount Washington got delayed, but Mount Washington for next year is something that I also really look forward to bringing an electric car out there. It's, it needed to happen earlier. <laughs> Now, does this sort of feel like, um, you know, I don't know what year you would kind of uh, choose as the, you know, the beginnings of, uh, you know, motorsports, uh, automotive motorsports. Um, would you say that this is like we're back in 1910 or something or 19, you know, 20 in terms of this or are, I mean, because if you think about it, the speeds and the times are going to be pretty good. Are we just actually in the year 2020? I think, uh, to me, I assimilate the time we're in of 2020. Um, to me, it's most assimilated with the late 50s, early 60s in Formula One, and the late 60s, early 70s in production car racing. And so the question is why? Well, in those years of Formula One is when the new tool of aerodynamics came about as well as the new tool of tire design and tire compounds started changing. So those, those were dramatic changes to what were previously open wheel cars with no wings and basically um, bias ply tires like a bicycle <laughs> on spoked wheels that were being hurled around by some of the greatest racing drivers of all time, risking their lives um, with no seatbelts and a, a leather hat, that's cute, <laughs> right? Um, to, to go around and set records. And then you go 10 years past, you know, the late 50s and into the late 60s. Now you've got wings, you have radial tires, you have proper racing tires, you have cars that are generating enough downforce to fly upside down on a roof, right? That's a huge learn. So that new tool set of aerodynamics and computational fluid dynamics and, and what they could do, that changed it in Formula One. When it came to production cars, I look at the late 60s and early 70s as to where we are with the Model 3. The Model 3 and the Model S, you know, out of the box, they, got great, they have great brakes on them and they do handle well. But the challenge of being able to harness that much power and it not overheating is something that is akin to the late 60s. And that's where you see gentlemen like Penske that brought the Camaro forward or, uh, gosh, you had um, Carroll Shelby that did a lot with Ford. Uh, those are individuals that were taking production cars and took them to the track and they they face the same challenges that our team will face and has faced in taking something that's a wonderful street technology and suddenly going oh i want to have it go fast lap after lap after lap so yeah i think that we are at a very exciting point with electric cars um it I'm, I'm just blown away with where it's going to go it's it, it's a new tool that as more people who are very intelligent surround this community and like transition from using their intelligence to try to get that last bit of power out of an atomized drop of fuel and they start to look at how to do that with you know an electron basically you're going to see some great innovations and and once the community gets behind that and just like we're doing we're, we share what we learn 
that, I mean, I can go online right now and I can buy 20 different roll cages for a Porsche. You, you can't find that for the Tesla right now. So this is part of that community build. It's also why we want to get people out to the track, whether they are an aspiring racer or just somebody who wants to see what their car can do. The more that that's out there, the more we learn from it. And Tesla has the advantage that everything is connected. So if they so choose, they can learn so quickly that racing, you know, to the road development. It's pretty awesome. So you think that we're at the 60s in terms of electric performance. And that is exciting because there was a lot of growth from that point. Um, when, like, so you think that we're going well beyond the Model 3. There's a lot of people who think that the Model 3 is the greatest car that, that we could ever have and that we've hit the peak and that electric cars are never going to get any better than the Model 3 um, because it is a really great car. Um, but you're thinking that, like, that would be saying the same thing of, like, a 1960s, what, like a like a Mustang or something, and, and it's going to get even better than that. I, I think in a lot of ways. I mean, so there's, there's a couple different defining points. Um, obviously, it's that standing on the shoulder of giants. That, that's already kind of occurring with the Model 3, that things that have been learned from other internal combustion cars can be transfer technology directly to the Model 3, and it can pick the best of that. As new battery technology comes out i'm excited for battery day on you know i think september 22nd right um that's going to be really exciting because a, a a step of technology improvement there can make a big difference in the entire downstream effect of performance um the other thing too to think about is that even with tires and wheels which we didn't talk about in that episode but the car has so much mass at such a low center of gravity it is unique among all vehicles as to the way that it loads tires so like your average car as it weight transfers the center of gravity is about a foot higher than the model 3 and as it the roll center occurs it loads the outer tire and the inner tire quite differently than the model 3 the model 3 has the center of gravity so low it's a side shift load right so even and that's part of the the benefit working with tire companies is that you know there's a lot of development that has to still occur so yeah in some the excitement of the 1960s and how things rapidly developed that's what i go with granted we're not you know building things out of mild steel with you know roll up windows and <laughs> lights you can barely see down the road with um, right. so yeah. it's better <laughs> that's good <laughs> and we're not burning as much uh, dinosaur juice so right. another big plus awesome yes. well thank you so much uh blake this was that was a really cool way to think about this yeah Thanks so much for joining us on Electric Performance Channel. Make sure you subscribe and like and follow our Road to Pikes Peak series where we're going to be racing a Model 3 race car up Pikes Peak on August 30th. Now you know. Thanks for watching Electric Performance. Please subscribe, share, and hit the like button.